The evolutionary history of the genus Homo during the Pleistocene is characterized by a complex rhythm of dispersals, range contractions, and regional adaptations driven by the oscillating engine of global climate change. Among the various hominin lineages that populated the Old World, Homo neanderthalensis stands out as the quintessential Eurasian specialist. Emerging from middle Pleistocene ancestors, often categorized as Homo heidelbergensis, Neanderthals successfully colonized a vast longitudinal range, extending from the Atlantic precipices of Portugal to the Altine Mountains of Siberia, and latitudinally from the glaciated margins of northern Europe to the Mediterranean woodlands of the Levant. Yet, despite this extensive colonization and their survival through multiple glacial cycles, a conspicuous and scientifically provocative void exists in their distribution, the African continent. The absence of Neanderthals in Africa represents one of the most significant biogeographical anomalies in paleoanthropology. Africa, the undisputed cradle of the human lineage and the source of multiple dispersal waves, including Homo erectus, Homo heidelbergensis, and eventually Homo sapiens, appears to have functioned as a one-way valve for much of the late Pleistocene. While hominins repeatedly exited the continent to populate Eurasia, the reciprocal movement of Eurasian taxa back into Africa appears restricted, particularly for the Neanderthals. This restriction is all the more perplexing given the geographical proximity of the Neanderthal southernmost range in the Levant to the African gateway at the Sinai Peninsula, a distance of mere hundreds of kilometers. The Neanderthal exclusion raises fundamental questions about the nature of biological barriers in human evolution, seemingly driven by a perfect storm year of impassable aridity, physiological constraints, and competitive exclusion by indigenous African populations. To understand why Neanderthals did not enter Africa, one must first examine the fossil record, which defines the absolute southern limit of their range. The Levant, encompassing modern-day Israel, Palestine, Lebanon, Jordan and Syria, represents the confirmed southern terminus of the Neanderthal expansion. This region acted as a biogeographical bridge between Africa and Eurasia, but for Neanderthals, it appears to have functioned as a distinct cul-de-sac. Excavations in the Mediterranean coastal ranges and the Galilee have yielded robust and undisputed Neanderthal fossils at sites such as Taboon, Kabara, and Amud. The distribution of these sites is telling. They're clustered in the Mediterranean woodland zone, an environment that, especially during glacial periods, resembled the temperate woodlands of southern Europe. Crucially, Diagnostic Neanderthal fossils have never been found south of the Judean Hills and Negev Line, while the vast expanse of the Negev Desert, the Sinai Peninsula, and the Arabian Peninsula has yielded Middle Paleolithic stone tools, it lacks Neanderthal skeletal remains, suggesting that the arid boundary of the Negev acted as a hard limit for the species. The chronology of this occupation is equally significant. Dating suggests an alternating pattern of occupation between Neanderthals and anatomically modern humans driven by climatic oscillations. During the warm marine isotope stage 5, around 130 to 74,000 years ago, the region was generally associated with modern humans. However, during the global glacial phase of marine isotope stage 4, around 71 to 57,000 years ago, the Levant became cooler and drier leading to the re-emergence of Neanderthals who were likely pushed south by harsh conditions in Europe and Anatolia. This timing is critical because Neanderthals expanded into the Levant precisely when the global climate was deteriorating, a period that coincided with hyperaridity in the Saharan barrier to the south, effectively trapping them in the Levantine Corridor. In the early and mid-20th century, the discovery of robust hominin fossils in North Africa led to significant taxonomic confusion and the hypothesis that Neanderthals had indeed crossed into Africa. Specimens from sites like Jebel Irhud in Morocco and Hawaftea in Libya were frequently described as Neanderthaloid due to superficial similarities such as heavy brow ridges. However, modern science has dismantled this hypothesis. A major breakthrough occurred in 2017 when fossils from Jebel Irhud were redated to approximately 315,000 years ago and reanalyzed using geometric morphometrics. This analysis revealed that while the specimens possess archaic features like a long, low brain case, their facial morphology is essentially modern and lacks diagnostic Neanderthal traits such as mid-facial prognathism and specific inner ear structures. Consequently, Jebel Erhud is now recognized as representing the earliest known clade of Homo sapiens, termed early anatomically modern humans. 
Similar re-evaluations of other North African fossils have confirmed their affinity with early Homo sapiens rather than Neanderthals, leaving zero confirmed skeletal evidence of Homo neanderthalensis on the African continent. The advent of paleogenomics has further clarified the picture, distinguishing between physical presence and secondary genetic introgression. While initial sequencing suggested sub-Saharan Africans possessed no Neanderthal DNA, more sophisticated algorithms have recently detected Neanderthal ancestry in modern African populations at levels ranging from 0.3% to 1%. Crucially, analysis of the specific haplotypes indicates that this DNA entered Africa via the back-migration of anatomically modern humans from Eurasia. This means that Homo sapiens left Africa, hybridized with Neanderthals in the Levant or Europe, and a subset of these mixed populations subsequently migrated back into Africa, spreading Neanderthal alleles into the African gene pool. Thus, the Neanderthal signal in Africa is evidence of human mobility, not Neanderthal mobility. Furthermore, a distinct ghost archaic signal found in West African populations, often confused with Neanderthal ancestry, has been shown to diverge from the modern human lineage well before the Neanderthal split, confirming it as an ancient autochthonous African hominin lineage, rather than a Eurasian intruder. The absence of basal, Neanderthal mitochondrial DNA in ancient or modern African populations further reinforces the conclusion that Neanderthal women did not enter Africa to establish maternal lineages. If the genetic and fossil evidence confirms absence, the mechanism of exclusion lies largely in the extreme climatic oscillations of the Saharo-Arabian desert belt. This region acted as a biogeographical filter, permeable to some but impassable to others, depending on the climatic phase. During the Green Sahara episodes of marine isotopes stage 5, high rainfall and river systems connected the African interior to the Mediterranean, allowing Homo sapiens to expand northward. However, during this warm period, Neanderthals largely retreated into northern and central Europe. Conversely, during the glacial maximum of marine isotope stage 4, when cooling pushed Neanderthals south into the Levant, the Sahara experienced hyperaridity. The Green Sahara collapsed, and the desert barrier re-established itself with ferocity. Neanderthals arriving at the Levantine Gateway were effectively blocked from further southward expansion by a wall of sand and heat trapped in the Mediterranean Woodland Corridor. Pollen analyses confirm that while the northern Levant retained woodlands, the south turned to steppe and desert vegetation, environments to which Neanderthals showed no archaeological evidence of adaptation. Physiological constraints further solidified this barrier. The Neanderthal body plan was a highly specialised apparatus for heat conservation, evolved over hundreds of thousands of years in the glacial environments of Europe. Following Bergman's and Allen's rules, they possessed high body mass relative to surface area and shortened distal limb segments to minimise heat loss. In the hot arid environments of the Sahara or tropical Africa, this cold adapted morphology would have become a significant liability. The primary physiological challenge in such environments is heat dissipation for which the linear, tropical build of Homo sapiens is optimised. A Neanderthal in the same environment would suffer significantly higher heat stress and water requirements. Additionally, bioenergetic modelling suggests that the short-legged Neanderthal body plan was less efficient for long-distance locomotion, requiring significantly more energy to move the same distance as modern humans. This would have placed them at a severe disadvantage in crossing the vast, resource-poor distances of the Sahara Arabian desert belt. Beyond the physical and physiological barriers, Neanderthals faced a formidable biotic barrier. The African continent was already fully occupied by Homo sapiens. Ecological theory posits that migration requires entering a niche, and if that niche is occupied by a competitor with equal or superior adaptation, competitive exclusion occurs. African Homo sapiens populations likely maintained higher effective population sizes and genetic diversity than the smaller, more inbred Neanderthal populations of Eurasia. Furthermore, by marine isotope stage 4 and 3, African populations possessed advanced technological advantages such as the complex projectile technology seen in the Aterian industry, which includes tanyard points indicative of hafting and potentially archery. While the Aterian industry shares the Levallois reduction strategy with the Neanderthal Mousterian, this is regarded as technological convergence or retention from a common ancestor, not evidence of Neanderthal presence. The unique Aterian tanged points are morphologically distinct and represent a sophisticated African tradition. Any Neanderthal incursion would have required displacing these denser, 
better adapted populations on their home turf, a scenario highly unfavorable to the invader. The disease barrier hypothesis provides a compelling explanation for why Neanderthals never successfully colonized Africa. To understand this fully, we must look at the specific dynamics of pathogen ecology, evolutionary immunology, and the geographic bottleneck of the Levant, the Middle East. The fundamental driver of this barrier was the ecological difference between Africa and Eurasia. Africa is the evolutionary cradle of primates, meaning humans and their pathogens co-evolved there for millions of years. The tropical climate supports a massive biodiversity of vectors, mosquitoes, ticks, flies and snails, allowing complex life cycles for parasites like malaria, sleeping sickness and schistosomes. When the ancestors of Neanderthals left Africa hundreds of thousands of years ago, they moved into the temperate and subglacial environments of Europe. The cold winters there acted as a natural sterilization cycle, killing off insect vectors and reducing pathogen diversity. Over roughly 500,000 years, the Neanderthal immune system adapted to this cleaner environment, likely losing the costly and aggressive genetic defenses needed to survive the intense pathogenic assault of the tropics. When Neanderthals expanded south toward the Levant, modern-day Israel or Palestine, they weren't just meeting rival hunters, they were walking into a biological wall. The African Homo sapiens living in this region carried a potent arsenal of tropical diseases to which they were tolerant, but Neanderthals were not. Likely candidates include ancestral strains of tuberculosis, Helicobacter pylori, associated with stomach ulcers, and various herpes viruses. For a Neanderthal, whose immune system was nerved to these specific tropical strains, close contact would likely result in epidemics similar to what happened to indigenous populations in the Americas after 1492. This high mortality rate would have caused local extinctions of Neanderthal groups attempting to push south, effectively creating a border enforced by microbes rather than mountains. We have concrete evidence of this biological warfare in our own DNA. When scientists analyze the human genome, they find that some of the most common Neanderthal DNA segments we retained are related to the immune system, specifically the human leukocyte antigen genes. This suggests that when modern humans finally did move north, they survived only because they mated with Neanderthals and stole their immunity to local European diseases like Epstein-Barr or sepsis-causing bacteria. Conversely, we see almost no evidence of Homo sapiens immune genes flowing into late Neanderthal populations in a way that helped them survive. This implies that while humans could genetically adapt to the lighter disease load of the north, Neanderthals could not evolve fast enough to withstand the overwhelming tropical burden of the south. This creates a picture of asymmetrical biological warfare. The diseases humans carried were likely older, more diverse and more aggressive because they came from the tropics. This gave Homo sapiens a grim biological advantage. While Neanderthal diseases certainly held humans back from Europe for a long time, the 50,000-year stalemate in the Middle East. The barrier preventing Neanderthals from entering Africa was much thicker. The sheer density of African pathogens meant that even if a Neanderthal band defeated a human band in conflict, the invisible army of microbes the humans left behind would likely finish the job, preventing the Neanderthals from ever establishing a permanent foothold on the African continent. In conclusion, the absence of Neanderthals in Africa is not the result of a single factor but a convergence of barriers forming a perfect storm of exclusion. The geographic trap of the Sahara Arabian Desert sealed the southern corridor precisely when cooling pushed Neanderthals into the Levant. Their cold adapted physiology was metabolically ill-suited for the heat and endurance requirements of the desert crossing. Furthermore, they faced a demographic wall of technologically sophisticated Homo sapiens and an invisible barrier of tropical pathogens. Neanderthals remained at the threshold in the caves of Mount Carmel and Galilee, leaving their fossilized remains within sight of the continent that birthed the genus Homo, but which they were biologically and ecologically precluded from ever entering. <laughs>